Um, hello, this is Oliver Blair and I'm going to give you a tutorial on how to do stuff in SketchUp. Uh, I'm just going to like sort of go through uh, how, to, how to make stuff from a drawing and how to just generally how I make stuff. Okay, so we'll just go, I was dragging, um, this is a picture, I guess it says Stephanie Upchurch made it and I've just grabbed it off the blog and I'll just sort of drag it in it's just a JPEG so you can just drag it in and then um, it's sort of at this size so I'll just make, uh, I'll just get the line tool and press L and um, actually uh, maybe I'll get the rectangle tool just press R and then uh, I can just sort of do sort of shapes I'll just sort of roughly outline how they should be. Actually, I want them all the same size, so I'll undo that one, and I'll just double click on the face on that one. And it, it when you double click, it uh, selects all the lines that are um, bordering the face as well. And then I'll just hit M to move. Click down this bottom corner. And then I can move it. But if I press Control, then I can like duplicate it out, and then then I can um, sort of follow on the different axes as well. But um, I actually grabbed it from the wrong spot, so I'll just hit Escape, go it from here, hit Control, and then I can snap it to that top corner, and then do it from that corner there, and do it again, and then. Uh, so now they're all the same size. Uh, should I do it again, or should I sort of crop it out? Yeah, it probably makes sense to just copy it. And then if I want to just do a little half one, I can just grab it into that, that midpoint of that line. Grab it from there, and then go down. Oh, it's a bit bigger, but we won't worry about that. And then just delete all the middle lines. Yeah, something like that. <coughs> and then, um, so this is like one square off, so I think I'll grab it from the midpoint in there. No, oh, that's not really going to work, is it? It needs to be from like there. Oh, I'll just roughly do it. It's not a big deal. So I might just draw it, actually. Um, yeah, I'll just roughly draw it out. That's what's good about having these, um, doing the drawing ones, because things get a bit loose, get a bit off-grid. But you can see, like, how I've done that is, uh, maybe I'll hide this. So you can see what I've done is to, to get it to be from this point as well, because otherwise you don't really know where it's ending up. But you can, if you sort of hover over that corner and come down from there on the green axis, then you can have it line up with this point. It should be lining up with this point as well. Yeah, there we go. So I can hover over that and then I can go on the red and then it snaps over to the green. So we know it's sort of lining up properly, even though it's sort of not matching. Weird. No, it's because I drew it. So, to move that, I can just select that line, and then move it down. Because otherwise, if I just drag that point down, then this line here won't be straight, and it's a bit off. So to make it all straight, select the line first, and then move the whole line down. Okay, here we go. Uh, sort of weird shape. And <coughs> I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I'll just see if we play. <coughs> but I might start pushing and pulling and I'd like just have we play. So push pull, just press P. And then um, I'm not sure how far up I sort of want it. I'll just have we play something like that. And then what you can do now is just select nothing. 
press P again and then I can double click and it'll um, it'll do the exact same height as the last push pull save me a bit of time not that if I really want to do that or not I'm not sure but what I might do now is make this whole cross here a group so how I can do that is just triple click so you go one two three and it selects everything that's connected to that face to, or to whatever I cl clicked on so <coughs> and then press G and it makes a component so we can just call it that whatever that's cool uh, did I press cancel okay create so now we can duplicate this by pressing M and then um, control again so we can move it up and then um, I can like auto scale I can change the scale and it won't affect it from the outside of the component but if I go in and scale it now it scales both of them so hmm, what I can do is um, I sort of want to create something because this is quite boxy so I think I want to create something more sort of circular somehow not sure how but I might I might I think you can do it from yeah so I'll press Q bring up the protractor sort of get along on this side of the shape and sort of hover over there and then come out from there on the green axis maybe sort of there-ish or something and so now what we can do is we can make arcs and so similarly with the uh, with the move tool the M with the Q with the protractor tool with Q you can um, you can duplicate as well but you can duplicate along an arc so I might do something sort of like that so it's touching in the middle and then click once to go yep okay and then we can press X and then a little times comes up down here and I can go times 20 oh wait hold on that didn't work maybe you have to do it to begin with I'll just try it again come along here press plus press control to duplicate it click once press X and then go 20 there we are times 20 that's because I was moving the mouse around it didn't work before and then we can get this big lovely arc or something half arc and the interesting thing is now we can sort of make that a group as well so select all those and then press G again make it a component and I think I want a, another arc somehow maybe it's on I think I want it on the green axis so see how when I'm over here it's green the protractor's green but then when I come onto here it's black so black means it's on a weird angle because it's lining up with that face <coughs> so what you can do is you can have it green over here when you sort of when your view is sort of pointing green and you can hold down shift and now I can sort of it's always green no matter where I'm on so I think I want it sort of something I do it from the middle of there or something Maybe, maybe down here, yeah. And then, um, so that's going to rotate it on the green. And just pressing control again to duplicate it. And then maybe I want it sort of, sort of there, times 20 again. Whoa, it's a bit too many. I think it, I think it went round 
couple times too many. So just press space again, select, Q, shift, control to duplicate it, and then try 10, or rather 10. There we are, there's, something's happening now. And we've got this weird sort of pineapple shape. Check out all this sort of stuff though, that shit's crazy. I mean, that stuff's crazy. It's getting really, really weird now. And so what happens if I make that a group? <coughs> and then rotate it. Maybe off, off this one here, maybe? And I think I want it on the black this time. And then we'll just sort of... Maybe something like that. Whoa! Now it's a bit strange. Whoa, what's happening up there? Something strange. Very odd. Kind of interesting though. But maybe, maybe that's sort of... it makes it too ball-y. Not sure why. So I'll just delete it and try it, try a different one. Maybe it's more like this, this way here. So it was just time six. So now we're getting really interesting. I mean, you know, this could be... You could, you could be from any discipline and this would be an interesting sort of form. So, like textiles or fashion or spatial or ID or graphics or anything, right? But the problem is it looks kind of ugly now because of this default style that SketchUp's in. So I'll bring the styles over. I'll just hit edit. I'll see what we can do. Turn edges off. I think I want to get rid of that background. And make it black background or sort of grey or something. What happens if I turn X-ray mode on? Oh, that's kind of weird. Whoa. Oh, lines are white. So just like having a little bit of play, you know, just sort of seeing what happens. It's a bit intense. It's quite solid in here, isn't it? Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Oh, maybe I'll turn um, faces back on, something like that. And then um, what about back edges? That's kind of strange. Yeah. Oh, anyway. So what, oh, maybe it's the shadow settings up here, window, shadows, I've already got it open over here though. And then you can sort of change this as well, is that going to change it? Hmm, it's kind of interesting. It's going on the ground so I can just check that off. It's really dark. Quite interesting. I'll just turn them off for now. Because it gets quite laggy when you when you've got shadows on all the time. So it's probably going to take a long time now, but I'll just show you because because they're all components. So see how I'm selecting one of those things and selecting all of them. So, what we can do is go into the deepest component level, which is that you can you can see all the different levels up in here and then an outliner. I'll just bring it over for now. 
So you can see I'm in I'm in this one, which is in that one, which is in that one, which has been repeated because I did that weird sort of copying stuff. But what you can do is now you can go in here and say you want you want it to be a bit a bit different. You can sort of pull that out. And now they all change. So now, wow, again something really different now. I want it to be a bit sharper or something though, so I'll just grab one edge. And when when you're moving in the direction you're going, you can tell it how far you want. You can just type in a number. So that's going one and a half meters, fifteen hundred. So I can tell it to go like thirty meters, thirty thousand. And we'll zoom out a wee bit. See what that looks like. It's like a big fuzzball. So you're getting really interesting sort of stuff now. This sort of really. Complex shape just from that one drawing. Yeah, cool. Alright, that should be enough of this one. Okay, cheers. See ya.